All right, this is Ross with Aquatic Oasis. We're just up here in Salt Lake, just picking up a couple things, just you know, for the new system, getting a couple more frag tanks, just so we can expand on how much we can hold in the coral nursery. And uh, here we are at Aquatic Dreams in Utah. Looks like your saltwater and reef specialists that they are. Uh, these guys have some phenomenal coral and a very clean store, something that's really impressive. So, hey, say hi, Tony. What's up, everyone? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And hey, this is Claire. How you guys doing? How are we doing? Yeah, we're doing great. So uh, we came to invade in on your space and uh, see what you have. So, yeah. So that is our SPS tank. And uh, you have some really mad growth going on with like this red dragon down here. How long, how, how long did it take you to get this red dragon to about this size? So it's doubled in about six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. It looks like everything is going really well in here. Uh, I was actually impressed for it because most, and I'm not saying anything negative about anyone, but you don't usually see SPS with growth on them in a reef shot, if that makes sense. You'll see awesome frags and stuff, nothing with any size to it. So then you guys have some pretty mediocre chunks over here as well. And kind of a killer price on them, too, 40 bucks. And yep. I would say that that is an incredible, uh, I don't know, I, mean, I can't particularly tell what kinds they are. A lot of them are Indo, is what I was told. Yep. So. A lot of them are actually frags from our own tank right next to you. From right here? Yep, that's why we're able to do uh, solos. We're actually culturing them. A lot of them are solos. That's incredible. I might have to take some more home. And then uh, let me get a wide shot of this, because this here looks super nice. Now. Just out of curiosity, did Driftwood do this for you? Yes, they did. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So Driftwood, if you don't know, they're out of Utah. They do a lot of the cabinetry and stands and things and canopies and hoods and all that for, well, specifically reef systems. I guess freshwater too, aquariums, they do all of that. And I would imagine they probably expand even past that and do just cabinetry they for do, people. Yeah, it's an actual uh, cabinet shop that now specializes in aquarium. Yeah, so I mean, this store, look how phenomenal this looks. I took a minute just to look at it. Yeah, I would love to see that. And you guys medicate your water with the fish, so you're like yeah. trying to keep down on ick and velvet and that kind of stuff. We also have a UV. Uh, and you're running UV through the systems. Yes. How awesome is that? So you got to. I mean, obviously you have signs saying don't put, <laughs> don't put this in your tank. Yeah. Because uh, you're gonna have your copper probably or whatever it is you're medicating with. Yeah. So that's awesome. You guys are clear about that with customers. And man, this fox face. I almost grabbed him, but I'm pretty sure my 13 tangs would find a nice corner to pin him up in. Probably. Yeah, they're, you know how tangs are. Yeah. And uh, some incredible euphilia here too. You got this orange camera. And uh, I wish I had, uh, my camera was getting better colors. This thing in real life has a very nice like pink tangerine type color to it. Um, anyone who's seen the orange wall hammers knows exactly what this looks like. And uh, this thing is, pretty mean and for 300 bucks that's a chunky piece considering what they go for online so yeah not bad uh, I just had a curiosity in oh you got to get in the shot Claire there's no running away okay so I'm obviously from Idaho and the market's much different there than here when it comes to coral and anemones fish what are some of the top sellers for your shop like things that are just bread and butter for you I'd say one of the best bread and butter items that we pull in the most of would be long tentacle and enemies. Really? Those are one of the most the items we sell most of. Those and acid wash mobile tips. And also fish wise, I'd say any clown fish. Uh, naturally. Dwarf, yeah, <laughs> naturally. Any dwarf angel, uh, the cardinals. Just mostly because the cardinals, they're a hearty fish. And I'd also say. Chromies. Chromis. Yeah, they're probably one of the best. Yeah, sellers, and chromis are popular in Idaho too, but uh, a lot of people get turned off to them for whatever reason. We struggle with them in Idaho. I don't know if it's like that up here, but I've managed to got. I had like what seven. Yeah. I, I feel like the secret with chromis is large group. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you don't have a large group in a big tank for them to actually school, if they're not naturally schooling in a large tank, they stress and they start their dominion over each other gets all whacked out. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, good little cheap fish if you can keep them going healthy, you know. So, yeah. They will cannibalize too. Yeah. Well, fish are just jerks to each other anyways. Okay. So not reef related, but for anyone who knows me personally, I used to go into the, the, the dart frog scene pretty hard before I even got into saltwater. Um, and I was pretty stoked because we bought a paludarium today. 
and I was telling Tony all about my collection of 30 plus frogs and there it is in the reef shop boom they got their dart frog vivarium going and they have these dart frogs in here I've actually I didn't keep these I wasn't even aware of what these were when I was looking at them and you called them uh, red headed histos red headed histos and see me looking at them with the knowledge that I thought I had oh yeah we can go right through that right huh? um I would think something similar to like a Phyllobates or even a Rodus, but man, they're really pretty. And I feel like every reef keeper should have dark frogs. Yeah. To me, they're like exactly this. They're like the terrestrial version of a reef tank. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have your cleanup crew. You got your plants you're trimming and cleaning up all the time, which would be like your coral, your fish or the frogs. I mean, and you still make a mess with water on the floor either way. So, yeah. <laughs> but this store just has so many like little like prizes and gifts just in every nook and cranny of this place. I mean, nothing's wasted. Look at this, this is their fish like bagging prep area. I mean, tch. what? Stone? <laughs> it's a candy shop in here. And of course you guys, I can see you have all your sumps and things stocked up there. Do you guys sell a lot of like the acrylic tanks or do you go more glass? Yes, we actually, so we have a huge maintenance side of our company. Uh -huh. And so this is actually just a smaller side of what we really do. We do mostly, we take care of massive tanks at hospitals, but we also do local. It seems like, yeah, that's where a lot of the, the actual money is made in doing the maintenance for systems. We so. don't build the acrylic or the glass tanks, but we go through a company that does. Well, and so we deal with a lot of large tanks as well as just small ones. And, and you're, it looks like you flip tanks too. You've got a really nice big sized one on a steel stand here. Yeah, this actually came out of the penthouse in Salt Lake City and it was on the 23rd floor. It's a 300 gallon. When, did they do bracing for the floor or something like that? And definitely don't forget that show tank. Oh, yes, the show tank. I'm glad someone brought them up. I also like that you keep the ATI bolts. <laughs> yes. Gotta have. Gotta have. If you're not running ATI, you're doing it wrong. Um, Giesman's really popular too, but I even when I had them, I was still an ATI guy. But now, this chalice, you told me the name of it. Autumn's Bliss. Autumn's Bliss. Okay. Um, I know where you guys keep it now. Have you had it for very long? That's, we have. Yeah, that's probably six years. Yeah. Got it forever. It frags itself. Yeah. Got some gold torches. Can't go wrong with gold torches. These trachophilia that you have are just full of color. Yeah. And I'm guessing like mummy eye or something. What is this? Uh, that's a mycidium chalice. Mycidium, yes. It is a family. I don't quite know the name of that one. I would assume, yeah. The chalices, there's like seven different classifications of where they come from. Definitely. But. These, uh, these scolies are my favorite. I'm loving that purple and orange though. And then, uh, and then hopefully in the next month or so we're going to bring in fresh water which is what this whole wall is going to be that's why it's pretty empty that will bring and that's going to be basically here in what this front window area yeah probably the front we're kind of are you doing discus we could get discus. yeah i used to breed, breed discus so that's uh yeah. so <laughs> that is the, at least from this corner it'll wrap its way around so uh -huh. that's why i'm here and not to be honest with you, reefing is cool, and I obviously I love reefing, but it's such a niche. Freshwater is just much more broad, and you can yeah. definitely I'm, make it worth it in a, I'm in a aquarium shop. For an aquascaped tank with, oh, yeah. you know, the well, if you like aquascape tape uh, tanks, discus. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we kind of had a tour of your store and everything looks great, but there's one part that we didn't see, and that's how you actually keep the coral alive. Yeah. And we'd love to see exactly your process here in a storefront of doing that in such an yeah. established way that you guys do. So I'll start on this thing. Yeah, and this thing here, you guys have some really good stuff in here. I mean, like these clams and colors on your schoolies, which is great. So the big, biggest part for this tank of filtration is this runs on a refugium, a Huge steamer. H380. Yep. Definitely have the castle for the grill. Yes. And this is how I run my systems too. I the old school Chato Refugium. Look at this skimmer, guys. 
Uh, and what's the capacity max that this is rated for? Do you remember? Is, and it's a... This skimmer could pretty much do up to a thousand gallon system. A thousand gallon systems. You've got the CO2 for the uh, yeah, so calcium, calcium reactor. reactor. We have a CO2 space away just because that's kind of how it was made. And I see you have a fan. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Oh, to cool the Kessel. Yes, those Kessels get so hot. My MP40s do too, like, don't touch them when they're going. Yeah, the fan just helps keep the temperature down during the summer and stuff. Gotcha. So we just run it all the time once the temperature starts heating up. Now, every reefer has used, like, the dome lights on the refugium. Mm -hmm. I think everyone has used those. Yep. Did you see a difference when you jumped to the Kessel H3? Yes. This actually grows into on a valve. I mean, looking in the map, we pull from that's actually and we've never had a problem like running out of it. We've been always able to grow it ourselves and sell it. Well, you can see why their water's crystal clear, but that's probably buffering the heck out of everything. The Fugium is a great way for filtration, for sure. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, and then you're using uh, Radeon. So are, are they just the standard like Gen 4 you're using? These are the Gen 4 Pros. Uh -huh. All the Radeons we have here are just the Gen 4 Pros. You show That's me. That's kind of impressive part. Yeah, I want to see, especially everything that you guys are proud of. So, and already I'm impressed. Hard plumbed everything, it looks like. Yep, it's all hard plumbed. Oh boy. So, that's an RK2 skimmer. This is what runs the whole wall of all the fish you see. Yes. Now, also, the UVs are right behind it. We've got the fluid sand filter, which helps us keep the nitrates down and the filtration up. Yes. Uh, we've got the cell. Tons of socks and stuff to also filter. Now, the thing that you can't see is behind this wall, behind the tank, we run ozone generator. Oh, you do run ozone. Yep, you guys went ozone. all out for your store. Yeah, ozone. That's kind of a lost art. I don't. I haven't heard of anyone using. And I'm not saying people don't. You just yeah. in a store, I've never seen it actually. Yep, ozone is definitely an expensive thing to put onto a system. Yeah. But we've seen a lot better parasite control yeah, with ozone running, such as with the ick and the velvet here. mainly. Yep. It helps with some of that and the UV. So between those two, and if we run copper or prosy, or and we also feed a rinko a lot too. That just helps us keep parasite control down, so we sell a healthy dish to the customer. They, is uh, like erythromycin? Is that the stuff? Yeah. Uh -huh. Very cool. And it, is this like you're an M&E tank? <laughs> the bubble tips, right? This is where every bubble tip belongs in a tank in the back. Oh, oh dude, you should have got my bubble coral before I sold them all. And you got your cool erpa. I believe that's what that is. The feather, feather variety of it. And then, uh, so is this, uh, this is mainly for anemones. Like, is there another purpose behind this tank? This is also the filtration in the refugium. So this acts as re refugium as well, with the mangroves and stuff. Very cool. Another thing that I noticed, um, kind of not related to this, but when you're bagging stuff for people, you're using large bags, no matter the size of the coral, yep. and you're putting a lot of water in. Like, yep. way more than I've seen possibly anywhere. That's uh, duly noted. I acknowledge that as a positive thing. So, yeah. We got one more place to check. Oh, we got one more. All right, and Claire's gonna be our tour guide. Tour guide, Claire. Let's go. So this is the SPS tank, and I see you're running a lot of Neptune equipment on it. And you say you have some special things over here that really help the tank. Yep. So the Trident Neptune's new release is what runs this tank. All right. It tests that alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium quite a few times during the day. Uh huh. Are you doing the four times or are you doing it more often than that? It actually does, I think, 12 times a day mm -hmm. on two of them and then a little bit more on one of the other ones. Oh, yeah. So it tests it a lot throughout the day. Man, I'll tell you what, my opinion on the Trident is you've always, in every forum, don't chase numbers. Yep. Now that the Trident came out, chase those numbers all day long and get your water perfect. Because <laughs> yep. it's a viable option now with oh, the yeah. Trident out. And that's what I find myself doing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because I love mine. It changed the game when it came to oh, yes. measuring calcium and everything. So Definitely for SPS, it is. So it's always a gamble, but with the Trident, you always know your numbers. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you guys so much for actually letting us into your store. I know with the uh, COVID-19 and everything, it's, it's kind of sketchy, but... Uh, Yes, tell me about the earthquake here in Salt Lake City area. It was pretty big. It was pretty gnarly. 
what, two weeks ago? Three weeks ago? Lost a lot of water out of fish tanks as some of our clients, but that was it. None of, they all held up good, so we can't complain. Yeah, well, we ended up having a, a, a 5.6 or something out of Homer, yeah, Hamer. Right. It was higher than that? Yeah. Yeah, so, like, you guys, uh, unfortunately for you, it was in the middle of, I mean, the infrastructure of your civilization here in Utah. Yeah. <laughs> in Idaho, we're in Hodunk farm country, and we get an earthquake, and it's bad. But there was actually a couple cases. Uh, a friend of mine, he, he said his tank was, like, he was holding his tank to keep it up. As was happening. <laughs> yeah, same thing. You're just like holding that. it, brace. Now I wouldn't dare do that because my 210 would fall on me. I know it would, and that would be the end of these videos. And YouTube would get really boring without this. But <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that like you didn't have things tipping over in your store, and I'm sure you're mopping the next day. But yeah, well, thank you so much for letting us come through your your store. It really is a beautiful store, and the fact you have dart frogs has made it amazing so the nostalgia is strong here but well i miss you in the reptile community ross i know yeah that's one i gotta jump back into is the reptiles yep. so so this is aquatic dreams in clearfield utah please come check these guys out especially if you're in the area do you sh do shipping do you ship coral yes so we have an online website called funky monkey coral funky monkey coral check them out they have some amazing stuff and some really healthy looking stuff as well so thank you everyone and as always Happy reefing from Aquatic Oasis.